post-splenectomy infection and I will refer to it as PSI and post-splenectomy infection is a very serious occurrence and has a very high mortality the mortality rate can be as high as 50 to 70 percent and patients who are involved are basically patients who are asplenic meaning they don't have a spleen either they don't have the spleen congenitally or it has been taken out or they have a spleen that's not functional functioning properly and these patients are at an increased risk for infection and death from encapsulated organisms so remember that term encapsulated and I'll give you a, a typical scenario really briefly let's say you have a little girl that presents to the emergency department with a history of congenital asplenia meaning she has not had a spleen uh, from birth and she presents to the emergency department with symptoms like fever and um, respiratory distress and then she also develops signs of septicemia which is uh, a very serious infection of the blood. And initial lab tests are done and shows that her WBC count is very high. And then blood cultures are done, and those blood cultures are positive for an organism known as Streptococcus pneumoniae. And this is a typical scenario because Streptococcus pneumoniae is one of the encapsulated organisms. So let's talk a little bit about pathophysiology what exactly is happening here and why is it happening patients with asplenia are susceptible for infection with encapsulated organisms because the spleen has macrophages and these macrophages are responsible for helping to attack encapsulated organisms in addition to having these macrophages the spleen also has immunoglobulins that also play a role in fighting off infection. Now if you don't have a spleen, the ability to fight those pathogens is severely compromised or diminished. Talk a little bit about three types of asplenia. Why would a patient have asplenia? Well, the first one is a situation where you don't have it from birth, so it's called congenital asplenia. The next one is a person who's had a splenectomy, meaning surgically the spleen has been removed. That can happen after trauma, such as car accidents. And the third type is known as a functional asplenia. And what that means is that the patient does have a spleen, but the spleen is uh, not functioning properly. And this commonly happens in blood disorders, such as sickle cell disease. So now let's talk about encapsulated organisms. Which bugs are we talking about? There's uh, three that I really want you to remember. The first one is a one that we just mentioned briefly. It's Streptococcus pneumoniae. The next one is Haemophilus influenza. And the last one is Neisseria meningitidis. So remember these three. Now if you do have a situation of post-splenectomy infection, how would you go about diagnosing this? Well, it's a very extensive workup, often done, of course, in the emergency department. It involves doing a CBC. You look at the white blood cell count, which will be elevated. You're going to do blood cultures to try to or isolate the organism. If you suspect pneumonia, then you will do a chest x-ray. And if you suspect meningitis, then you will definitely want to do a lumbar puncture. As you can see, it's a very extensive diagnostic procedure. In terms of treatment, treatment of course has to be IV antibiotics. And the two most common used are vancomycin and ceftriaxone. And one final point I really want to mention before looking at the clinical vignettes is vaccination. Very important. Patients with 
asplenia should be vaccinated with pneumococcal vaccine. And this helps prevent uh, post-splenectomy infection. In addition to getting the pneumococcal vaccine, they should also get vaccines for two other encapsulated organisms such as Haemophilus influenza and also the meningococcal vaccine. So now let's take a look at a couple vignettes. Which of the following organisms is associated with increased mortality after splenectomy? So basically they're saying if someone is going to get an infection, which infection would they get uh, after having a splenectomy? And we're of course talking about encapsulated bugs and of the choices listed, the only one is pneumococcus. Next question. 33-year-old man is in the hospital recovering from a motor vehicle accident from which he sustained a liver laceration, right pneumothorax, and a splenic laceration. He is two weeks status post an exploratory lapara laparotomy with splenectomy. His post-op course has been unremarkable and he is now preparing to return home. He describes feeling well. His only current medication is a daily multivitamin. Temperature is 37, blood pressure is 124 over 78, pulse is 78, and respiration is 21. Cardiac rhythm is regular and lungs are clear to auscultation bilaterally. Prior to discharge, the patient should receive a vaccination against. Well, the key thing is that he's had a splenectomy. He should be vaccinated against uh, pneumococcus and also Haemophilus influenza and also the meningococcal vaccine. And of those three, the one that's listed is D, streptococcus pneumoniae.